title of the topic I really want to deal with is the excuses that we make while being in the truth. Okay, the excuses we make while in the truth. Right? Now understand, just like today, I know for a lot of us, it was hell getting here. Okay? And, and not for any uncertain reason. Because when the Most High have something for you, understand that Satan going to throw every device from West Hell in the midst to stop you from receiving what the Most High has for you. So guess what? A lot of us could get frustrated, make excuses. Well, I'm not going. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing the will of the Father. What the Most High ever did, did to us, but loved us and nourished us and cared for us and been there for us. The most I didn't do, he's been there. The only stability that we have in our lives is the most high God. So he didn't do anything to us. Okay, but understand when there's an issue, it's the adversary at work. Okay, now check it out. Grab me Hebrews, right? Hebrews 12 and 1. Yes, sir. You're going to read that through verse 8. Hebrews 12 and 1. Yes, sir. This is the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, verse 1. Come on. Wherefore, seeing we also compassed about with a great cloud Come on. of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight. Let us do what? Let us lay aside every weight. Y'all see that? I see some pages turning. I'm going to let y'all get it. I'm going I'm I'm to take my time with it because I want y'all to be able to see it. So we in Hebrews, book, verse, and chapter. Where we at? Yes, sir. This is the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, verse 1. Let me know when you're there. Say calm when you're there. All right. I need y'all eyes on the scripture as we break it down, right? Read it again now. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with a great, with, with so great a cloud of witnesses. Come on. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doeth so easily beset us. Exactly, the offenses. So you can't do the work and be effective with the Most High if you're always offended. You, you, you can't, you're, it almost immobilizes you from doing the work of the Most High when you're in a mind state, and we kind of hit on that mind state last night where, you know, you're not feeling it or your spirit ain't right. And it's like it throws you completely off your square. But guess what, brothers and sisters? That's an excuse. Because Christ was a man that dealt with like passions. That dealt with all the things that came in with dealing with the adversary. Okay? When you read the description of Christ, he wasn't a handsome man. Okay? Very dark-skinned. Hunchback, short man, unibrow, very unpleasant to look at. Did you, you never read in the scriptures where Christ was in a depressed status? Well, I'm not attractive. You know, I, I don't know if I can do this. All he said was, I have to do the will of the father that sent me. No excuses when it comes to the, to the work of the most high, right? Read. We must put away every weight and sin that easily beset us. Come on now. And let us run with patience. Let us run with what? With patience. With what? With patience. So understand that this race here, you can come in this truth as fast as 99 miles an hour and crash and burn. Okay? It doesn't matter, brothers and sisters, to a certain degree how you start is how you finish. You could have started as good as you wanted to start. And then along the way, because of weights and sins, it threw you off your square. And now you're not as effective as you was when you first came in the truth. But we care as Israelites, as the leaders that Christ is asking us to be, we can't allow that to dictate how we serve the Most High who's been the most consistent thing that we've ever had in our lives. Check it out now. Read. Let us run with patience 
the race that is set before us. Come on. Verse 2. Looking unto Yeshua, the author and finisher of our faith. You see that? Come. So whenever you feel like, okay, it's too unbearable, it's too much, you must look to Yeshua, who's the author and finisher of our faith. So you're not getting beat to blood. You're not getting whipped and spit on. Okay? Constantly ridiculed at every current moment. So it's not that bad. And notice Christ did those things and, and kept in the spirit of the Most High. Didn't lash out. Didn't say, you know what? I'm going to destroy all of y'all. He endured. Right? Come on. Who, for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross. Come on. Despising the shame. And is set down at the right hand of the throne of the Most High. Exactly. For consider him that endureth such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. Exactly. Read. Verse 4. Ye have not yet resisted unto blood. Y'all see that? That's exactly what I was saying. So we haven't resisted unto blood. So nobody's putting us and, and taking us down Broad Street or somewhere in Delaware with a, on a crucifix and saying, because you believe in Yeshia and the Most High Ahia, you you you're going to be destroyed. None of us have resisted to blood. Although we may get ridiculed here and there from our families every now and again, that's just words. What's that going to do? But we have to make sure that that doesn't take the fervent spirit from the Most High out of us. Okay? Because I know it'd be a battle, brothers and sisters. Hey, through the week it's not easy. You go through all types of stuff, fussing, arguments, fights, low ends on bills, money problems. But what does that have to do with the most high? Not a thing, right? Verse? Verse 4. Come on. Ye have not yet resisted unto blood, striving against sin. Exactly, striving against sin. So you haven't resisted to blood battling a righteous battle. Okay, well, I haven't, I haven't seen any, any post or any announcements from the elders that say, you know what, brother so-and-so passed away because he was street preaching. We're not there yet. Read. Verse 5. And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. Come on. My, my son, despise not... Thou as chastising of the Lord. So don't despise the chastisement of the Lord. And it comes, brothers and sisters, in many forms. When the chastisement comes, like the scriptures say, we got to be like children. Okay, I do better, mommy. I do better, daddy. No problem. But it's a, it's, it's, it's a demon. It's something within us as adults that we get when the chastisement come, that flesh well up, and nothing could be said. When the chastisement come, it say to be like children and not to despise the chastisement of the Lord. Go ahead. Nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. See, nor faint. When we're rebuked of the most high. Okay. Read. Verse 6. For whom the most high loveth. For who the most high loveth, he what? He chastiseth and we, scourgeth. And scourgeth. So we're going to go through it. So understanding on our road to being perfect, the most high going to deal with us. Like for a lot of us coming in here, it was a reminder how critical life is. It's the Sabbath day. You got somebody straight on I-95 that just jumped and took his own life because spirits took over him. 
But guess what? You can't look at him and look at yourself and see a large distance. Because it's only one demonic possession away from you losing your ever-loving mind and jumping off a bridge. That's all it takes is for your emotions to override what the Most High gave you, common sense and reasoning. And then the next thing you know, you're looking at those, those, those seven days of habitations. That's what that man is dealing with right now. What you would call an a, a out-of-body experience. Okay? Most people don't understand right there, seeing that man, there was the presence of the angels, <laughs> the angel of the presence, and all that. And him just looking at himself, like, what in the world just happened? And guess what? It, it, it clicked in. And at that point, it's no time or space for repentance. It's over with. It is appointed for men once to die, but after that, the judgment. So we'll look at it coming up I-95 as a traffic accident or something, but there was straight, you're watching the most high play out. You're watching straight judgment on the way here, not realizing that, man, people are being judged daily. I'm being judged daily. Okay, and understand, brothers and sisters, there's no 60% or 70% pass. It's either pass or fail. It's either righteous or unrighteous. Right? Go ahead. Every son whom he receiveth, mm. verse 7, if ye endure chastising, the most high dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? Exactly. Verse 8, but if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then are ye bastards and exactly. not sons? Exactly. So if you're not going through something within the truth, who, who are you serving? And you know what? That's not just a letter to Israelites, but that's also a letter to, to Christians alike. If they're going to church Sunday after Sunday and nothing's wrong and everything's good, they're having a good old time, clap their hands, they can eat pork, shrimp, crab, and lobster, and nothing is happening, you have to realize that at that point, they're to their own demise, their own ruin. But a lot of times, you start to see the chastisement of the Most High more so when you come into the truth. Because what? Your sons and daughters. So the Most High is going to straighten you out before the judgment. He's going to deal with you with issues and problems and all that and strike fear and turmoil and issues so, he, so your soul could be saved alive. That's what the Most High do with his sons and daughters. Check it out now. Read. That's it on that. Okay, get me Romans, the fifth chapter, verse 1. Yes, sir, this is the book of Romans, chapter 5, verse 1. Say, calm when you're there. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with the Most High through Come our on. Lord, Yeshua Christ. Read. Verse 2. By whom also we have access by faith into this grace, wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of the Most High. Come on. Verse 3. And not only so, but we glory in the tribulation also. But we what? But we glory in the tribulation also. So you must not glory when you're receiving grace of the Most High and getting passes for sins that you're not aware of. And say, oh, thank the Most High, a higher. But we got a glory in the Most High in tribulation. That's when it really show, okay, is he your help? 
Is he the one that you depend on when it all goes down? You got troubles. That's the time you're supposed to glory in the Most High. Read it. Knowing. Knowing what? That tribulation worketh patience. It do what? Knowing that tribulation worketh patience. So every time there's trouble, it's a test, brothers and sisters. So when you hear something or deal with something you don't like, or something comes in, that's what? A test. And that tribulation or trouble is supposed to work what? Work with patience. You see that? So how will you know that you have patience with something unless you're tested? You can say you have all the patience in the world, but it only comes and you get to see the patience in, that you have is when you're tested of the most high. When a hard situation come in. When something that you don't agree with comes in. How do you now gain the resolve and say, you know what? I'm, I'm going to deal with this in the spirit of the most high. See? Come on. Verse 4. Come and, on. And patience, experience. And patience what? Experience. Why? Because you'll know that when it happens the next time, instead of you having the feeling that you had the first time, you won't even go there. You'll be like, I know what this is. I done dealt with this. I know how to deal with this spirit. That's the thing. How do you, how do you cater to something that you've seen over and over and over again? It should be obvious. I'm not giving in to this. Like, come on. It's experience. Okay, read. And experience, hope. And experience gives you hope. Read. Verse 5. Come on. And hope maketh not ashamed. And hope maketh not ashamed. Come on. Because the love of the Most High is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. Exactly. Right? Go ahead. Which is given unto us. Which is given unto us. Right? Yes, sir. Now, let's grab 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy 3 and 5. Right? Yes, sir. This is the book of 2 Timothy, Timothy chapter 3, verse 5. Say, calm when you're there. 2 Timothy 3 and 5. So we know that patience, right, as the scriptures say, have a perfect work. So you will never be able to test your patience unless you go through tribulation. Okay? So understand, it's like, oh, man, I'm in the truth. Things shouldn't happen. No, that's when things absolutely happen okay because your patience is being tested read verse 5 having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof read from such turn away now you have to understand and we went into a lesson last night you understand the understanding of love and friendship okay the form of love that we feel like in the earth that we see, the emotional zone, is not love. We brought out multiple examples of what Christ was speaking of when he was rebuking the Pharisees, when he rebuked Peter. That was in straight love. So it's not what we feel like it is, right? But read that scripture again. Sir, this is 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 5. Come on. Having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. Read. From such turn away. Exactly. Come on. Verse 6. For if this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with divers lusts. Exactly. Because guess what? And we talked about that in length, right? Yes, sir. With dealing with friends. Because we gave the qualification of a friend. The qualification is what Christ said. The greatest love is that a man would lay his life down for his what? His friends. But we're talking about somebody that actually have a form of godliness, but deny the power thereof. Okay? That creep in a zone in your circle and actually ends up sowing seeds of discord. 
and taken from you what you initially had. You're dealing with Satan himself. Watch this now that subvert whole houses. Read. Verse 7. Ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Remember, because I said one of the key elements, if you know if you're dealing with a spirit or not, is when you're dealing with somebody that got all the precepts in the world when you're, when you're on your lowest point. Okay, well, where's those precepts when I'm doing well? I don't see you at all. But you throw me a scripture when you feel like I'm in sin and now you have the upper hand. But these are people that might on the surface look educated. Okay, they're ever learning, but never really come to the knowledge of the truth. Why? Because they don't realize and consider themselves that they going through something too. Okay, check it out now. Read. Verse 8. Now as Janus and Jambres withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Resist the truth. Now, remember, we're speaking about the lesson last night and dealing with certain things. You know, we always build off these lessons a lot of times. It tie, it go in hand in hand. You can't make an excuse based on what you dealt with in the truth. Well, I thought, because I hear it all the time. I've been in the truth, and I wouldn't think that people or this would happen to me. Why? The same people that was in the Christian church, so to speak, the Israelites, who are always Israelites, are guess what? Right here. And, they sh and, and guess what? Everybody's struggling with something, seeking perfection. Okay? But watch this now. Read. Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning mm. the faith. Mm. Verse 9. But they shall proceed no further, for they, for they folly shall be manifest unto all men. Exactly, read. As theirs also was. Verse 10, but thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, patience, persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me in Antioch. Exactly, read. At, in Antioch at Iconum and Lystra, what persecutions I have endured, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. Now let's think about some of the persecutions, because this is Paul writing a letter to Timothy. So let's think about some of the persecutions, right? They were first called what in Antioch? They were called Niger. So guess what? The disciples, just like us, they dealt with what you would call quote-unquote racism. They dealt with being labeled. They dealt with persecutions from church to church. They dealt with all the issues that we dealt with today and still persevered through it. Okay, that's what he's speaking of, right? Come on. Verse 12. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Yeshua. How many that will live godly? All that will live godly. A few. All that will live godly. Some of them. All that will live godly. Read. In Christ Yeshua shall suffer persecution. Now, check that out. So that should be a red flag automatically. Am I in the truth or am I not in the truth? Okay, because guess what? All the years, and I grew up in the Christian church. Grew up Pentecostal. Tearing the floor up. Shouting and all that. But guess what? Whether I was in a circle amongst Muslims, Christians, Jews, atheists. If I said I was Pentecostal, it was no big deal. But the minute I said, listen, all praise be to a higher, by Hashem Yeshua, well, man, that, that dude is crazy. He, he done fell off. He's in a cult. That, that dude, man, he used, to be, he used to be a solid dude. I don't know where I had Lord help him. See, the persecution come when you follow and now you're in the truth. Right? Come on. Verse 13. 
But evil men, but evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Exactly. That's what you're seeing in the world now. A bunch of deceivers that are being deceived. Because that's what, you don't have sound doctrine that's anywhere. So most of the time, that's why I'll be telling, you know, you all to make sure that when it comes to teachers and dealing with things you learn, to deal with people you can actually interact with. Because you, don't, you can't vouch for what you're seeing on this YouTube stream or this YouTube stream. They got good points. Okay, well listen, you have to understand, they have teachers too. So how do you know if their teacher isn't a deceiver, being deceived themselves? Okay. That's why the scriptures say for us to come together <laughs> and to actually have a convocation and reason together. Okay, check it out now. Keep reading. Verse 14. Come on. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, mm. knowing of whom thou hast learned them. Verse 15. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures. Exactly. When we were young, that was one of the first things that was introduced. And see, that's another excuse we would make. Well, I didn't know if the commandments was right. Well, when you were a kid, you learned thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not steal. You shouldn't bear false witness. Well, you learned that from a kid. The scriptures say that we should study to show ourselves approved. We should have built on that. Okay, as children coming up. But of course, what happened? Deceivers came in. But praise be to the Most High where we're, we're at today. Right? And that's a miracle in itself. Right? But grab me now, 1 Timothy 6 and 8. Because on the back of making excuses, we make excuses for everything why we maybe can't make it to the Sabbath or do something for the Most High. Like, man, I ain't got no gas money. Man, I ain't got no food in the refrigerator. What that got? What? what? Maybe the most high putting you on a fast. There's so many things that are, that are sticking points to stop you from serving the most high with a fervent spirit. But they're distractions. But read that scripture here. Yes, Come on. We're in the book of 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 8. Come on. Having food and raiment. Now having food and raiment. And listen, like I always say, I'm looking around, and I don't see any emaciated people. Y'all got on some nice threads, and y'all look healthy. So we know that the Most High have stuck to his promises. Having food and raiment, read. Let us be there with content. Exactly. That's, listen, if the Most High did that for us, he did, he did more than enough. And there's not, you know, you may not have everything that you see the next man have, but the most high provided. Okay? I get people come in, they come into the church, and they're like, you know, Bishop, I, you know, I got a polo, but I ain't got no fringes. I'm like, what that got to do with anything? Man, sit your tail in the seat and learn. And the most high eventually, he'll bless you know, that's why sometimes I make a conscious effort. I'll be like, you know what? I'm going to just put on a suit. It ain't got nothing to do with fringes hanging to the floor. Because you have Jews, one that's one outwardly, and then you have Jews, one that's one inwardly. Okay? It don't matter. With, with, with food and raiment, we should be content. Read. Verse 9. Come on now. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare. Y'all see that? 
So that's why sometimes the Most High will have a cap on your finances. Be like, man, I, yo, I done got me a new job, a promotion, and where is this money going? What in the world? It seemed like, I'm, where is this money going? It's like into a well. Like, I just, wait, I, you sit there with your, your checkbook, your bank book, and you be trying to balance stuff and figure it out. Like, okay, wait, hold up. I was making fifteen twenty five. now I'm making twenty two fifty. I got the same bills, and I got less money. I'm, a, I'm confused right now. I don't know what's going on. You don't realize that's something supernatural. Because the math don't add up. Do you understand? Read. But they that will be rich fall into temptation. Exactly, read. And a snare. And a what? And a snare. And a what? And a snare. Because the Most High know us. Okay? You get you a little change. You going on that trip. Okay? You ain't thinking about the Most High. You going on that trip. You seeing them beaches. Okay? Hey, he's looking good. I'm resting on the Sabbath day. Pass me my mojito, the water, right? Hey, no, hey, I'm keep it real. The most high know us. Mm -hmm. Like we like, listen, I'm telling you, Israelites are professional chillers. We know how to chill. Oh, <laughs> like, you know what I mean? That should be a sport. Like the 2000 and a live chill event. Okay. He got his feet up with a drink with his hand in the spa, watching TV, with, with food coming. Oh, man, he's a professional, right? Come on. And into many foolish and hurtful lusts. And many foolish and hurtful lusts. That's what happens when we get a couple dollars over. Mm -hmm. It be it many foolish and hurtful lusts. Things that we had no business getting, buying, or none of that. But yet and still, we felt like what? I needed it. Read. Which drowned men in destruction See? and perdition. Exactly. Come on. Verse 10. For the love of money is the root of all evil. Exactly. So when you have, and listen, we all face that dilemma with coming into the Sabbath. You deal with, when you come into the truth, you deal with lifestyle changes. Do I get that overtime on the Sabbath? When I go to apply for this job, I have to tell them I need at least Friday even off to Saturday evening. Okay? And obviously, you know, we as leadership, we're going to be like, listen, brother, you know, hey, sister. If you're working, hey, you know, the most high give grace. But as Elder Lloyd would say all the time, you have to judge yourself. And these are the more weightier matters that you have to deal with personally. Like, okay, is there another option? Have I exhausted all my options? Or am I just taking an excuse and saying the money's good, I'm not leaving it for nothing. Well, the scripture lets you know real clear, you can't serve the most high in man. It's either one or the other. And you know what? We live in a day and age now where there's so many unconventional jobs. Where you just go out somewhere with a smartphone and make some money whether it be delivery, whether it, it be stocking shelves, whether it be whatever, there's so many out, out of this world, just unconventional jobs that will allow you to be able, right, to sustain and support yourself. But the question is, are we comfortable with living for the most high, are we comfortable with a certain level 
of living conditions. It's like, does the living condition override the servitude to the most high? You, you know that, hey, you know I got to have my organic Fritos. So I, I, got, I got to keep at least seventeen fifty, and you got to have at least $10 so I get my organic Fritos. Because if I don't have them, you know it's a whole spirit that's going to come on. Right? When, hey, the $8, the $10, the $9, it may be, a, be enough to get you by until the most high bless even more. But the thing is, are we living for ourselves or are we living for, or, or are we living for the most high? Right? Come on. Which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith mm. and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Exactly. Because at the end of the day, you realize, man, I got this job. I may have the, this nice ho house in a car that I wanted. But now I'm longing. I'm looking at the Passover. I'm looking at first fruits. I'm looking at this feast day, and I missed it. I, 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 what is that, you know? What is, what is that feeling that I'm longing for? Well, listen, remember, the flesh and the spirit are what? They're contrary. So the things that please the flesh are on a, t a different spectrum than what pleases the spirit. And they're always constantly warring against each other on a day-to-day -day basis, right? Now, the next scripture. Yeah. Get 2 Thessalonians 1 and 3. So, Matter of fact, Salakia, give me Luke 9 and 59. Luke 9 and 59. Because a lot of these things that we're talking about when it comes to the excuses, we're faced with these same things not before we come into the truth. Because if you notice, I, I, I give you a great scenario. A lot of times when we come to the Gathering of Christ Church, things were kind of came to a head and settled. In other words, like when people first come in, they're able to make every Sabbath. And then you'll notice that in the midst of you being in the church, there's always some type of career change fork in the road. Well, now it's like I got to make a decision whether I continue what I used to do or do this. Right? But you must ask yourself this question. Read Luke. This is the um, book of Luke, chapter 9, verse 59. Check it out now. And he said unto another, follow me. He said what? And he said unto another, follow me. So he said unto another, follow me. Read. But he said, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. Exactly. So when you're looking at this precept, the key focus isn't the burial because people will magnify the minute and focus on the burial aspect. Are we supposed to go to funerals on the Sabbath? Are we supposed to do with that? It has nothing to do with that. That's not the main focus of the scripture. It's speaking of all the things that were put in place of him just stopping what he was doing to do the work. Even giving you the extreme example of a funeral. Right? Come on. Verse 60. Yeshua said unto him, let the dead bury their dead. Now, most people would look at Christ and say, man, that was kind of cold. And that's what we were speaking of last night with the understanding of love and friendship. Christ loved that brother. He wanted him to actually enter into the kingdom of the Most High. He said, listen, what I got to do to follow you? He said, okay, listen, you said that you was going to follow me. Okay. Read. But go thou and preach the kingdom of the Most High. He said, listen. Instead of you dealing with, right, this whole zone of the burial, listen, let those that are dead bury the dead. But you go and preach this kingdom. Do the work of the Most High. 
You understand? It's like most of the time, like I talk to brothers and sisters, be like, hey, they'll be like, Bishop, I went to a funeral. I'll be like, how was the funeral? It was strange. It was, it was out of Corinthians and Thessalonians, and they was just teaching the rapture, and I'm like, man. I'm like, what'd you expect? It's like two different levels of understanding. Now, nobody's saying it's wrong to, to, to not pay respect to your family. You know if it's a grandmother, somebody close, go. Pay your respects. But the key is, we got to realize not to lose, use anything as a crux or an excuse not to follow the most high. It may be Johnny Smo that you've never seen in your life. They're like, oh my God, Cousin Day Day on my mother's side died. I got to go to the funeral. You're going to sit way in the back. You ain't going to know who nobody is. The food terrible. Listen, you could have been serving the most high. What's going on here? Right? Come on. Verse 61. And another also said, Lord, I will follow thee, follow thee, but let me first go bid them farewell, which are at home at my house. Exactly. So let me, let me go and, you know, tell my family what I'm doing. Right? They, they talk about, and it, gi it gives you the mindset of the Most High and following the Most High. When something is laid on your spirit, that's not a delay. That's the full understanding of the scripture. It's not a delay. It's not a, I got to do this, this, and that first. Let me get these ducks in a row first. Because listen, time is for what? It's for what? Time's for judgment. So you don't have time on your side. Time doesn't belong to you. You're not the timekeeper. So when the Most High puts something on your spirit to do it, he's expecting you to do it, not now, but right now. Okay? It's not time like, oh, well, you know, hey, let me do this, let me do that, let me do this. No, the Most High is requiring something out of you. Otherwise, he would have put it on your spirit. Check it out now. Come on. Verse 62. And Yeshua said unto him, No man, having put his hand to the plow, and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of the Most High. So that's the bottom line. So you make your mind up to do something based on the Most High giving you a calling to do it, and you turn around and choose to do something else. Listen, you got to reconsider your walk with the Most High. Because you can't start this walk and then be like, you know what, I'm going to ease up a little bit. I've arrived. It, like I tell you all the time, it's a marathon and not a sprint. Like if you feel like you've done enough, guess what, you haven't done anything. Me as a bishop, I haven't done anything. I got a lot of work to do. You understand, on a daily, day-to-day -day basis, you got to look at yourself, you got to self-reflect, and you got to improve. What can I do better? What can I, what can I improve with? Stagnant, being stagnant is not an option with following the Most High. That's why you see the, the, the examples in the Old Testament of our foreparents moving from place to place. They can never stay still. Because when the Most High told Abraham to go, he had to go. When he told the children of Israel when they was in Egypt under Moses to leave, they had to leave. And it tell you in the Passover, they had to leave with what? Haste. 